Hello, Williams class. For your English lesson today, the learning objective is, can I change my keywords into sentences? Remember, we are working on our non-chronological reports. I would like for you to refer back to your box up and the keywords and ideas that you have written down. We are going to be looking at how to use this information and turn it into interesting sentences. Just a reminder on the right hand side of the screen for you, or maybe it's your left, um, to the types of sentences that we might have. We have declarative, which is a statement. For example, I have a basketball game tonight. I just finished reading that book. You're saying something, you're declaring something. That's how I remember declaratives. Your second type of sentence is an interrogative. That is a question. Will you come to my game? Have you ever read this book? Um, so that is when you're asking your question. It's like when you're being interrogated, if the police ever take you in to ask you questions, that's where that word interrogative comes from. Your third type of sentence is an exclamatory, and that is an exclamation. We won the game! Or this is the best book I have ever read, which I say a lot. Um, so exclamatory is an exclamation. You're shouting something, you're exclaiming something. Do you know when you read books and you um, often hear the person in the book say she exclaimed or he exclaimed? Um, it's when you're shouting something. And then your fourth and final type of sentence is an imperative. This is a command or a request. For example, please come and watch me play or read this amazing book. So we have had a lot of practice with imperative sentences, boys and girls. Well, we've had practice with imperative verbs. An imperative sentence is exactly the same thing. It is a sentence that has an imperative verb within it. So for the first sentence, please come and watch me play. The imperative verb there is come and watch as well. And then for the second sentence, read this amazing book. The imperative verb there is read building simple sentences. Each part of the sentence is color coded. Subject is um, in the red, is colored in red. Um, verb is in pink and object is in green. Now with just two or three of these, you can make simple sentences such as, the girl brushed her hair or Julia sang. So the girl is the subject, it's who you're talking about. Brushed is the verb, the doing word. Her hair is the object, what the girl is brushing. Um, for the second sentence, Julia sang. Julia is the subject, sang is the verb. Let's practice making some simple sentences together. Building sentences with either a subject and a verb or a subject, verb, object, sentence. So, using just two or three of the bricks below, how many different sentences can you make? The rules to this are, you can either use um, one red and purple together, or you can use one red, purple, and green together. So let's see how many different sentences you can make. I will give you an example of how I've used a red and purple, and then also how I've used um, a block from a red block, a purple block, and a green block right now. If I was just to use one red block and one purple block, I would do, hmm, my dad cooked. What does a sentence always end with? And what does a sentence always start with? Capital letter. That is not a capital letter. This is a capital letter. So I've used my dad, which is a red block. And then I've also used cooked, which is a purple block. Now that is um, an example of a sentence using uh, one from the purple and one from the red. Now I'm going to use one from the red, one from the purple and one from the green. So I am going to say, let me see. Hmm. A kitten. I haven't really thought about the boys and girls, but I'm trying my best. A kitten um. <laughs> Why not? Kicked. Do kittens kick? This one does. A kitten kicked. Okay. 
Okay. A ball. There we go. And then what do all sentences have to end with? A full stop. There we go. That's my sentence there. A kitten kicked a ball. A kitten, red block, kicked purple. I didn't have a purple pen. I apologize. And a ball is some uh, a green block. And that is how you can make um, a really interesting sentence. What makes it interesting is not how long a sentence is, because this sentence looks longer than the other one. So you might be thinking, oh, the longer the sentence, the better. Not necessarily. But what a longer sentence does or should do is give extra detail. Rather than it be more boring, it should just add more detail. So where I previously wrote, my dad cooked, what would have made it really interesting is if I mentioned what he cooked, just to add a bit more of detail, rather than just saying my dad cooked and he did this and he did that. Add detail to what you've already written. My dad cooked a bowl of spaghetti for me for dinner. My dad cooked, rather than my mum, my dad cooked, twice a week you know it adds it adds extra detail and it makes it more interesting and more um personal as well which is which is a nice thing i think now determiners to improve our sentences we need to include determiners determiners are words that come before a noun they introduce the noun and they give the reader important information about it some examples are the trees two dogs my dad, her finger, an octopus. So a determiner, the way I like to remember it is it determines something. It tells you about something in, um, in, a, in a way that no other type of word can. So for example, the trees is telling you to look at the trees. Two dogs is telling you how many dogs there are. My dad, it's telling you to look to, the, it's telling you that the sentence is talking about my dad, not someone else's dad. Um, her finger, again, it's telling you exactly whose finger we're talking about here. And then an octopus, it's telling you that there's only one octopus being talked about. So these are very, very important types of words, boys and girls, and they often um, come before a noun. So the nouns in these sentences or uh, phrases would be trees, it's the name of something, dogs, dad, finger, octopus. So remember nouns are um, the names of people, places, things, um, objects, that kind of thing. Making our simple sentences better. We can add more vocabulary to our sentences to make them better. We can add adjectives um, and we can do this, sorry, by adding adjectives to our sentences. So for example, if you start off with the sentence, the girl brushed her hair, you could add two adjectives to make it even better the little girl brushed her curly hair. So you've got the determiners as well, let's not forget, you've got the and her, and then you've got the adjectives, little and curly. So little is telling you how old the girl is. It's not giving you an exact age, which is fine, but it is telling you it's not a big girl. And also curly hair, it's telling you the type of hair, the texture, which is just a nice way of adding detail. And it's quite important detail actually, because being someone who has curly hair, if someone was to brush my hair, that is very painful. Um, so it must, it gives you a bit of an idea of how that girl must be feeling when um, she brushed her own curly hair. It must've been quite painful, very different to someone with straight hair. So already just by adding the fact that her hair is curly, it's added so much detail, which gets, um, it just gives you more detail. Basically, I've said detail a lot of times, but that is the point of adjectives. And that is the point of adding more types of words to your sentences. When you use an adjective to describe a noun, the adjective goes between the determiner and the noun. So it goes between the determiner and the noun. The nouns here are girl and hair. And as you can see, the adjective is right in the middle of the determiner and the noun because it's little. Curly is right in the middle of the determiner, her and the noun hair. So that is where the adjectives go. Adding adverbs to our writing. Once you've added ad, uh, adjectives to describe the nouns, we are then able to add adverbs. Now think about how the action is happening and that is where you put your adverb. You include it to give the reader more information about the verb. So you've got a sentence, the little girl brushed her curly hair. Now add an adverb. 
the little girl carefully brushed her curly hair. So do you remember when I said before, brushing curly hair is not easy. So she's brushing it carefully. That's making me smile because it reminds me of when I try to brush my hair. So an adverb usually goes before the verb that it describes. So you're describing um, what she did, which is brushed. And then you'll see the adverb is right at the beginning, not right at the beginning, sorry, but it's um, before the before the verbs, it's carefully brushed. So that is a nice way of remembering where your adverb goes, it goes before the verb. An adverb has the word verb inside of it anyway, so it's a nice way to remember exactly where you're putting it when you are including them in your sentence. Um, fronted adverbials. To make our sentences even more exciting, we can add fronted adverbials to our sentences. Now remember that a fronted adverbial is a word, phrase or clause at the beginning of a sentence to give more information about the action. They are always followed by a comma. So you have your sentence. The little girl carefully brushed her curly hair. Add a fronted adverbial. In the morning, the little girl carefully brushed her curly hair. Again, extra detail, it's telling us when she did this. She must have been very sleepy. It makes you um, infer a lot from the sentence. Infer means to take information from the sentence that's not necessarily mentioned, um, which is really, really cool. Uh, so remember, always add a comma after your fronted adverbial. So you would expect to see a comma after the word morning because that is the end of our fronted adverbial. So in the morning, comma, the little girl carefully brushed her curly hair. Conjunctions. We can use conjunctions in our writing to add another clause to our sentences. These allow the reader to have a better understanding of what has happened and adds more information to our sentences. So you have your sentence. In the morning, the little girl carefully brushed her curly hair. Add a conjunction. In the morning, the little girl carefully brushed her curly hair because it was tangled. So you've included the conjunction, which connects two different types of sentences together. You've got because, and then you've got your clause, it was tangled. Clause is one phrase that is connected by a conjunction. So um, when you include both of those, you're just adding, um, you're giving the reader a better understanding of what's happening exactly in that sentence. And again, another way of adding more information. Write your own sentences now. Have a go at building your own interesting sentences. Use different colors to show the different parts of your sentences or underline the words with a ruler and label what each word is. So you have to write um, two different types of sentences and you've got a nice little code here to um, give you an idea of what I'm expecting you to mention in your whole sentence. So for the first sentence, I'll just number them so you know. This is number one. And this is going to be your second sentence. So in the first sentence, I'm expecting to see, I think they're exactly the same actually. Oh no, they're not. In the first sentence, I want you to include fronted adverbial, determiner. This is in the order. Fronted adverbial, determiner, adjective, subject, verb, adverb, determiner, adjective, conjunction and clause. In your second sentence, in this order, I am looking to see fronted adverbial, determiner, adjective, Subject, verb, adverb, determiner, adjective. What's the green? What's the green? Oh no, the green's not mentioned. Ah, uh, I think that's noun and conjunction and clause. So have a go. You have had some practice of looking at um, these types of sentences. It's a lot less scary when you're actually writing it. I promise boys and girls. It is when you really think about it. When you do write this, you'll realize they're just like the normal sentences that you should be writing anyway. Um, and using different colors. You don't have to use the exact same colors if you don't want to, but using different colors will then um, help to remind you of any parts that you might be missing. So if you don't have a red part in your sentence, then that's telling you that you've forgotten to include a subject. So that's a really clear way of um, going over your work to check, um, to, to see if there are any errors there. Your three tasks for today, boys and girls. Task number one, with our sentence building in mind, use your information from your box app to create your draft of your final non-chronological report. Task number two, read through your work and make sure that you have included conjunctions like because, when, if, and although. Underline them in a different color. Then task number three, the last but not least, is include interesting sentence starters and fronted adverbials that are punctuated correctly in your sentences. Those are your three tasks. 
that is enough from Miss Goulza for your English lesson for today, boys and girls. Enjoy, and I shall see you, or you'll see me probably, very, very soon. Bye.